Good morning guys, welcome to another short video by Antique Serena. My name's Walter O'Neill and today is going to be a bit of an out and about video, um, buying some stock and just generally out and about. Um, it's five to six and I'm sat outside uh, Sandra and Di's house waiting for Sandra to come out. Um, we're off up to Cavartha Castle buy-in. It's raining again. I am so sick of seeing rain on the weekends. Um, it's unbelievable. I'll give you a little look. I don't know if you can see it on the windscreen here. Raining again. Um, so, what turnout's going to be up there? I really don't know. Um, uh, it'll be what it'll be, guys. Uh, I've got a new line uh, to uh, give uh, a little announcement for um, Gary, um, one of my followers, was kind enough to send me um, a name of a, some baker light that's pulling some seriously high money, guys. Uh, it's not a name I was aware of. Now, I always know Art Deco and baker light and that sells anyway. Um, some of the baker light jewelry. Uh, can pull good money but the name you've sent me is Carvercraft now Carvercraft do um, you know items ink wells um, things like that they are named let me see if I can get the stamp they have a maker's mark on them Search. They are stamped Carver Craft guys, okay? But as you saw there, that inkwell was £600 for an inkwell. Um, let me look if this one's got stamps. Bear with me. I want to show you the mark I do. If I can find one with the mark. Hopefully you can see that. So it's a, almost a little engraved mark uh, or etched mark carver craft made. I can't read it all, but what it looks like to me, to be honest with you, is somebody holding a little hammer or mallet with a chisel. Um, that's the mark, but it is stamped carver craft. Hello. I'll have a look now for you. All right. All right. No problem. We're coming out anyway. If there's no one in uh, in here, I'll go to the house and have a look. Oh, Ciao. Oh, there's Sandra. Can't find a court. It may be down my house from when we worked. Anyhow. Um, Again, there's the uh, mark, guys. I'm going to go back to eBay and give you a little look at Carvercraft sold items. And I'm going to go highest price. I want to show you the best prices achieved for this Carvercraft. Sold prices, now mind. Here, book ends at the top there. 800 and something pounds. Eight, well, they had 850, but they took a best offer. Underneath then, 495 sold for an inkwell, 495 again for bookends. Show this camera. There we go, hopefully you can see it guys. These are sold prices now, not um, asking prices. All these are green, I've clicked on sold. So we're still in the hundreds. So that's a name to look for, guys. Carvercraft is. I always buy Art Deco and Bakelite and things anyway, but Carvercraft now, if I see that stamp on something, I know that it's going to pull a premium. So if somebody's asking 100 quid for a pair of Carvercraft bookends, I'm going to pay it. Plain and simple. Uh, here comes Happy. Okay, guys, well, I've picked Happy up. 
Uh, we've just arrived up in um, Merthyr uh, Cavartha Castle a minute. Um, we're going to get out and about now and uh, so forth. Here's my mate. Glad to see him. That's the one from Gavilon. He um, tried filming earlier on, i got to admit that I'm not going to lie. He tried filming earlier on and I was in a right strop. I got into the car. Really had a good old stop. I'm I'm in Slimming World and I got scales in the house and they are God. I'd sell the tape under my foot. I really would dry it and the kids have touched them. Pressed all the buttons, moved everything around. I got on them this morning and gained three pound. Now I don't know what they've done to them, but it also means now I've got to be super strict. So I've got a face on me. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> gonna be a lovely day. Stop raining for two seconds. All right, and it looks like they finished all the work on that beautiful, beautiful castle. Look at that, guys. This is on my doorstep. This is a museum as well. Um, let me see. They have a lovely selection of Nankaru, Swansea, Josiah Wedgwood. They have some amazing art. Um, one of Sandra's favourite things in there is the Victorian clothes. I love them. They have some old, st old style clothes. Um, oh, let me see what else they got. They are the chandeliers. They got chandeliers coming down off the room. They must be 15 foot tall. Spectacular. Best thing in the museum is an emperor penguin. They I do have an emperor penguin. emperor penguin. I've had photos of that emperor penguin, let me tell you. And there's a mummy's head in there, mummified mummy's head. And I've had photos smiling next to it. And I tell you <laughs> why, you wouldn't believe the likeness. <laughs> <laughs> Any who's? Um, let's get up into the boot sale. One of my uh, dealer mates just uh, pulled in and uh, let's just say I have some real nice pieces off him. So I'm excited. See you soon, guys. Bye. Sorry about that, guys. Got a slight distraction there. Um, more stock brought to the car. Um, as I was saying, we haven't been here long. 20 minutes, half hour. First cup of tea. I couldn't stop for tea. <laughs> I've been out. I've had all sorts. I've had solid silver already, I've had solid silver tongs, I've had solid silver decanter labels, I've had a dozen or half dozen decanters. Um, oh Christ. I got three boxes full in the car already. Just give you a little look. That's already this morning. All are this morning already. All it stands me in is £65. I've had solid silver decanter labels, I've had um, crystal decanters coming up my ears. I've had a set of tongs that size, not sugar tongs, serving tongs, solid silver tongs. Um, I've had a GCHQ book mm -hmm. from 1965 full of autographs, all the signatures of people who serviced. And if anyone who don't know what GCHQ is, it's Central Intelligence Agency. It is basically uh, government communications for keeping us safe. Um, and that is a book full of autographs of people who uh, served there in 1965. So that's very interesting. Um, what else do I have? Oh, I've had umpteen stuff, guys. I'm going to oh. show you, uh, obviously, at the uh, end of the video, all the stock. Or what I may even do is what we may pull over somewhere today. Uh, have some food and go through the stock as an out and about and show you the pieces Dave outside food. So you never know, but there's a few cars in here today now already um, And I'm really really optimistic. Doing well and optimistic the weather is still picking <clears throat> the rain have caught us up I really hope it holds off um, or certainly for a wee while But if the day gets rained off now, I've bought enough stock to well, I've got a enough stock there to last a week happily um is a week's wage just in what i've bought by there so i really can't mourn about that even though you will no i won't i'm really happy he's a traitor today two guys hulk it's still marvel no it's not captain america he's a traitor that's john's that's my little boy's mug the one who was in the video with me I think it I don't know when it, I don't know when it will get published but uh it was filmed yesterday but I got that many films up, backed up 
I don't know, uh, the order kind of gets messed up a bit now. Has he done a little film again? Yeah, he no. was in the film with me. <laughs> he was helping me, he was putting all the seagulls back on the shelf and that while I was talking about them. I love it, didn't he, Blas? Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, it's going all right, guys. Buying's really well. All the antique dealers are starting to turn up now and here comes the bloody rain. Hang on a minute, guys. Never mind about him, Mr. Right. No, what I had, do you remember my spot? No, when I kept on about my spot. Have a look at this. It's scarred. <laughs> it's an actual scar on my forehead. Isn't that really bad? Really? No, I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> it's going scarred back in. my face. I'm going back in. Um, before this rain washes, it totally out. I'm going to see what the other cars have got on in a minute. So I'll get back to you. I'll see you soon, guys. <laughs> Hi again, guys. Uh, burnt yourself on cold tea. <laughs> it's not cold. <laughs> There's a few cars in here now this morning. It's nothing spectacular. You know, it's quite quite small. You've seen the size of a violin and that. That's not bad. Um, this is a more personal small car boot, but the dealers are not up yet. So what I get, it may only be 30 cars, maybe 50 cars by the end of the day now. But I'm certainly a big fish in a small pond. I'm one of the big dealers up here now, as opposed to being in Gavailon where there's hundreds of dealers, or Cardiff where there's hundreds of people. And I'm a you know, small fish in a big pond. So it's going it's going okay, even happy years by in. I'll have you, uh, I'll show you her Chinese dogs are full shortly on yeah, film. Yeah, they're going by my, fire, my fireplace. It's going to be so cluttered. No, it's not. They're going by my fireplace. They go I have just, said... And I bought two little dolls. For my new shelf that I'm having up in my bedroom, I've decided now I'm going to collect little teddy bears and dolls just to put on a little shelf. I have said in a previous video that I was going to show some photographs of uh, living room and that. And don't ask me how, but I forgot. Doesn't take a lot. I normally, when I say I'm going to put some photos at the end, I normally do. So I will try, if I remember, or if someone reminds me, to put some photos in at the end of today. Especially with the dogs are foe in situ. It's um, the rain's still holding off for us. It's picking slightly, um, but it's it's holding off. It's not too bad. I can't wait to show you the stock I've bought already this morning. It's absolutely unbelievable. I'm hoping uh, it'll dry out now today, so I can sell tomorrow in Gatley Gear. But it mm -hmm. ain't looking optimistic, and I really don't want to go back to Cardiff. I want to go back to Cardiff. I was moaning about that this morning. Not for selling though. I just want to go down and have a look around. <laughs> I miss Splot. <laughs> There's another one coming in by you now. There was two young girls on the stall and both of them are dripping in gold. They must have three or four ounces each around their neck. And I heard the one saying to the other about jewellery, so I said, can I have a look at your jewellery, please? And she said, oh, we can't find her a minute. I've got a bangle and that. And I thought, well, it's got to be gold. They got that much gold around their necks and arms and fingers. And I, I said, I thought to myself, it had to be gold. They did put a bangle out on the table. Yeah, and you picked brass. It and it was, yeah, I was going to say it was just a brass. brass bangle. All the gold they got, they pull out a piece of brass. <laughs> <coughs> well, just my luck, innit? <laughs> <laughs> got to have a moan in the morning. It could have been worse, guys. It could have been plastic. <laughs> We'll be singing our boot sale song now if it rains on us. I can warn you now, be warned. If it rains on us, we'll be singing our boot sale song. And if you watch my videos, you'll know what that song is and you'll be cringing. Did you turn it down? It hasn't been released yet. Oh, God, thank God for that. I tell you what, it's cringe. Anyway, guys, see you soon. Bye. <laughs> well. It's raining. <laughs> yet again. Take a look at that windscreen. Yet again, rain has stopped play. Seriously, where the hell is the summer? We got a cloud over us, I think, guys. This this British summer is really doing my crust in. I've been buying so well this morning. Between us, we have filled the car. It is full. Ah, I done the carrier bag. Two, two pound a carrier bag. Ah. I slagged her off the other day, guys. She was too posh to uh, get in the there dirt and fill a bag dead. for two quid. She beat me to it today. She was in there filling her bag before I even got a bag. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a bag. <laughs>
So, but yeah. somebody else was picky today. He stood there and put about four things in his carrier bag. I ended up, I filled my carrier bag, but I was very choosy what I wanted to put in. I've sold everything that was in there, bar for the blazers. Um, so I'm not going to moan about the last one, but what I'll end up doing is cutting the buttons off the blazers. I'll keep the buttons and I'll give the blazers to charity. They can put new buttons, plastic buttons on them and whatever they want. Um, that's what I'll probably end up doing if I can't sell the blazers. But all in all, been a seriously good morning. Um, we were going to stop somewhere, have some food outside, show you all the bits we've bought, but it's hammering down so again. because it's raining now, I'm expected to starve. <sighs> He's paying for a meal now. Because it's raining, we're certainly not going to be showing you the stock outside. So it's going to have to be when I get home later. Now I'll show you the stock. Um, yeah. The boot sale's only half full. And it is raining. Everyone's covered over or packing up. So. What can I say? We've tried, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to torture you and sing our song again, because we haven't really got that wet. We come straight back to the car. But I'm going to go visit my mum, and then we'll decide where to go from there. Because there is a car boot sale over in Masakoma. Oh yeah, Masakoma. And we haven't been to that one for a while, so I'll oh, see. Oh, I've been where nagging the, about Masakoma. I'll see where what the weather's like there, because that's a good 15, 20 miles away. So it's still maybe dry there. Because in, the one thing with Wales is you can rain on that side of the road and that side of the road be dry. Trust me, I've seen it. Um, or more likely, it'll rain on my stall at the car boot and the next stall is dry. <laughs> um, but no, we, we're going to go off. I'm going to go visit my mum, uh, have a cup of tea, uh, maybe a piece of toast. See, food. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. He's not having no food or piece of toast because you're supposed to be buying me food. So we're going to go to Mam's. Uh, if we end up in Marcy, I'll uh, give you a little look around Marcy. Come on, guys. Bye for now. Ciao. Okay, guys. Um, home now. Uh, rain did kill play. We went over to Marcy Come and there was three cars there. Total waste of time. What a flop. To be totally honest with you, the um, farmer even had a stall himself and he had the best item there which was an arts and crafts uh, copper fender with goat's heads on the corners but he wanted £30 for it and I felt but it, was un it wasn't an adjustable one so it was limited on the amount of people you could sell it to, it had to be that exact size fire front. Um, uh, I just felt, couldn't be bothered. It was a big item, it's bulky to store, bulky to ship. Um, had it been 10 or 15 pound, I might have bought it. Um, so, but I left it there. Anyhow, I'm going to show you some pieces now that I've had from Mirtha this morning. To excuse me unwrapping them because I'm looking at them for the first time as are you today. Right. First piece we have here guys is a decanter. Now take note of the pattern. It's cubes, little squares. Um, now this pattern is American glass and it's called Fostoria. Uh, if you run a search on eBay, some Fostoria pieces can be hundreds um, and then other Fostoria pieces can be as little as a pound. But this cubist pattern is quite sought after um, and it is Fostoria. That's the first of them anyway. So bear with me for a minute. I haven't given you a price yet because, plain and simply, all this that I've shown you now come in for one price. He's got all of them in priced individually, but that doesn't really matter. It has no bearing on um, what I've paid. Look at there now, guys. What have we got here? All right. 
here we have a second Fostoria decanter. So we have a pair of these Fostoria decanters. Uh, and what's a pair of them worth? In my opinion, about 30 quid for the pair. About £15 a decanter, no problem at all. So they're alright. I got to try and match the stoppers to the bottles because I've had quite a few again. Um, right there, where are we at? Okie dokie, let's have a look here. Nope. Nope. Huh. Well, that's all fun and games here, guys. Kind of matching all the stoppers. Now, I haven't been through these decanters to see if any of them are signed or anything yet. There's a signature on that one, but I'm going to need an eyeglass. Now, stopper wise, that one. So, there's the next. It's got this shallow cut in. On the shoulders, down the neck, it's got slices down here, so the whole thing is all cut. Beautiful quality squarish decanter. Um, as I said, it's got a signature on it, but I can't see it without my eyeglass. You'd think I'd have the sense now to bring my eyeglass in when I'm making the films. There's the first of the decanters. Must have more decanters in another box. Hmm. I got more lids than I got bottles. So I must have more decanters in another box. Here we have another, which is quite a substantial piece. Looks bohemian this one. No signature on that one. You can see this triple or oh, double neck ring on the collar, all faceted. So again, nice decanter. Real nice cut crystal one again. Can I see the signature? Tell what my eyes again really bad, even with glasses on. I can't see a signature in a minute, but it looks like Stuart Crystal to be totally honest with you. The pattern's quite familiar. So there's that one again. Then we have that boot there. When you're looking for the signature, it's not always on the base, sometimes it's around the edge here when the base is fully cut. However, have the, have the signature on that one there, that one's Stuart Crystal. So that's a nice Stuart Crystal uh, decanter there. Um, we have a little jug, or a little measure, again in crystal has the engraved measures on the side can't see a maker's mark on that one but it's it's a nothing piece to be honest with you so there was one two three four five six decanters guys six two for Storia, the one confirmed Stuart and the three that I'm not 100% on the names yet you know, you'll have to excuse the kids in the background guys they're going a bit wild upstairs but at least they're not killing each other a minute, so hopefully John won't come down with any more broken glasses. Right. There we have a really interesting corkscrew. It's covered in um, hobs and barley. So it's quite a nice uh, little corkscrew there. Obviously it's a lever corkscrew. Them kids are going absolutely crazy. So, there we go, this is the corkscrew guys, we then had, I think this is for taking the tops off champagne, champagne bottles, a 
and I think this might be part, no I don't know what that's part of, maybe to go with that, maybe I don't, no, I don't know what that is exactly, it's obviously the same sort of thing, but not 100%, so, oh I might be to do with this actually, yeah, it's to do with this which is a um, coker of some sorts, I think this is for applying corks back into a bottle. So there's a little selection there, but we're not done yet. I'm going to put them back in the um, box there. And we come to the pieces I actually really, really like. The decanters, they okay. Work in stock. Now we have a selection of labels. Port. This one is, I believe, silver plate. I'll acid test it in a minute, uh, but I believe that one's silver plate. We have a selection of porcelain labels by various makers from coal port all the way down. You got, let's see, you got coal port, Royal Adderley, and a Staffordshire. So you got those four there. Then we come across here to a brandy label, which again is going to have to be acid tested. And then we come to one that is absolutely stunning. One of the best bits of it all, which is a gin label. It's a real nice one. And this one is fully hallmarked. Very hard to distinguish. Right under my finger, but there, guys. Full set of hallmarks. So, that one by there on his own is worth £25, £30. No problem at all, just for the gin. I paid, you ready? 60 candles, the corkscrew, the champagne bottle opener, the recorker and all the labels, £25, all of it, that one piece is going to cover it, I can sell the decanters out, 10 15 20 pounds a piece, doesn't matter, the corkscrew again, um, and I'll put the job lot of labels on, on eBay, you know, five a piece maybe, 10 20 25 25 quid for them, so all in all, that's going to be a really, really good turnaround. Really pleased with that. So, what can I say to that? Happy days. <clears throat> that little measure, it'll go on the boot cell for a pound. Right, so, next piece I come to is a tongs. So, or a serving tongs, maybe. Now, his description is... Silver plated serving tongs, two pounds. And I paid him his two pound, I didn't knock him. However, guys, right here, I don't know if you can make it out, it's stamped 830S. So that is 830 parts of silver. So these are not silver plate, they're not 925, they're 830 silver. So it's 830 parts as opposed to our 925 parts but they are a set of silver handled tongs for two pounds. When you, you need to familiarize yourself with the uh, marks on silver for continental and other countries, uh, 800, 900, 935, 830, they're all grades of silver. Especially when it's 830 with the S after it, that's 830 silver. So, that was a steal, really was, as was the decanter label. As you know, you know exactly where those two are going, guys. I don't even need to tell you. Next then, I bought a job lot of jewellery, and I paid, paid £10 for all of it. And in fact, I'm going to show you. He had 18 for the lot, um, but he done it for me for a tenner. So, firstly, 
we have a nine carat gold hunting horn brooch with horseshoe with foxtail. As brooches go, that is absolutely spectacular. So that's the first one. We then have a silver gilt tie, a tie pin with diamond. Is the camera focusing on that? Hopefully. Then there's a pair of silver cufflinks. And for those of you who like dogs, there are not one pair. I'm trying to get the camera to focus is a nightmare at the moment. Uh, two pair. Those are both with dogs on, and then you have the mother of pearl. Again, sorry, pair. So three three pairs of gold plated cufflinks or rolled gold cufflinks with two with dogs on, uh, one set with mother of pearl, the silver cufflinks, the gilt tie pin, and the um, hunting home brooch are all getting put away. I paid a tenner for all of them, and in there was again was these two a necklace and a bangle. But I'd say they're base metal, but they're going back out tomorrow for a couple of quid. <coughs> also in there is a set of silver earrings. And they're quite nice. I think they're handmade. The uh, box says handcrafted jewellery NOA. So... So there we have it. That was a little, real nice little job lot of jewellery. Really pleased with that. So that can all be put away. That's not going nowhere. But you already knew that, guys. Can't keep holding forever, mind. One day it's going to have to go. Okay, moving on. Um, I bought a new in the box Otto TV box, um, which is for multimedia, it's for Netflix and YouTube and all the rest of it. It's a little box you plug into your TV and it's a bit like a fire stick. I paid a pound for that. That's going back out tomorrow because I got full sky, I don't need it. This one is marked up at 18, but I gave a tenner. Now, you see here in beautiful gilt is the GCHQ, which is General Headquarters um, Government Communications, which is basically the central, our central intelligence, which is, um, if you like, for all, all the other purposes, spies. Now, that's the uh, year, or pre pretending to be the year, 1965, 1956 to 1965, and we have a letter here, the undersigned wish to express their personal esteem for Dr. J. Morgan on the occasion of his change of division in 1965. So we have quite a few signatures there. Obviously this is going to need research. There's quite a few signatures there. Now all these are from, as I've said, like MI5 or wherever this place is. This is uh, the uh, Our Intelligence Agency. The approach of the 10th anniversary of M Division and the news of your appointment as founder of the head of N Division Give us the opportunity of expressing an application of your leadership in the past and of conveying to you our very best wishes for the future. That is the paragraph there. Now this is all really nicely done. That is in gilt. This is really, you know, on the best quality paper, sign writing at its best. And then we come in to 
signatures. Now these are all signatures, I believe, of people who were serving in that division at the time. And there are pages and pages and pages of them. It's very interesting. Need I go on? This book is full. Well, I think it's full. Now all of these, how many of these were actually spies? I don't know. But from what little I've had a look on um, GCHQ, it is our version of the CIA. So, for all we know, some of these signatures in here are seriously important. You can see every page so far is full. And these are real signatures, guys. These are not facsimiles. This is a very interesting book. I haven't done no research yet as to see um, if there's another out there or not. Uh, getting to the last couple of pages now. So showing you there is an entire book of signatures there. So obviously this was a very very important um, person here. This wasn't a cheap book. It's handmade paper. Handmade paper it has plenty of age into the paper. All the signatures are real signatures. And I tell you what, I'm going to have great fun in trying to find out what I can about this little piece here. 1965, so it's well past any um, classified or security uh, risk. Um, we're talking well over 50 years ago. So, if you're a military collector or collector of like Cold War relics, what a, what a thing to find. In a castle car boot sale. As I've said, I don't know a lot about it yet, but I'm going to do the research. But I can guarantee you there's going to be a few collectors I know who will want that. Okay, I'm going to move on from there. Alright, yeah. The Old Mill Grimwades. Old pottery jug, quite a nice one. You know, obviously the mill wheel here and everything. I was looking at this as a 1930s or 1950s jug. I'd say 30s. It's in good condition. I don't might buy a lot of jugs, uh, ceramic ones, but this was a nice one. It's hand painted, it's in good condition, and I, th I found it was unusual. And what's more, it was two pounds. So I'm happy enough with that. Next we have a real nice um, cigar box maybe, or just a box. You can see all the um, parquetry inlay here, really nicely done. Nice piano hinge and if you look here you can see all the individual slats of wood that have gone up here. Now I don't suggest this is seriously old, uh, maybe 60s, 70s, you can see the price I paid for it. It could be um, a card box believe it or not, you know, a couple of decks of cards maybe, something like that. But it's well made, it's well made and it's very decorative. So I'm not going to struggle to get 15, 20 quid for that. <coughs> we got a couple of original Hogarth prints. Now one way of telling if they're original, I'll turn them around and see if they've been opened. You can see it haven't been opened, it's got the old paper, the old nails. So that's one good indication it's never been out of this frame. So looking at the type of nails and the paper and everything, I'd say this is about 1900 in date and it was a pound. And again we have 
another pair. If you look at the prints there, they're the um, half man, half horse. Really interesting. And again, if I turn it around, you can see it's never been out of the frame. It's good age to it. Apparently, it's just a no-brainer, let's be totally honest with you. Uh, the marriage feast. Hmm. Well, what can I say? The beggar's opera. So either way, we have two Hogarth prints here. Now I have no idea what Hogarth prints sell for. They're not going to be fortunes. They, you know, they're not grand enough or old enough to be worth serious money. But probably 10 or 20 quid per framed print, no problem at all. Probably get 10 or 15 quid each. And for a pound each, that's not a problem at all. Last couple of pieces um, I've picked up in this little job lot, guys, a minute. We have a very unusual pyramid, food pyramid, food warmer. Sam Clark's pyramid food warmer. Really, really unusual. Um, now, if you collect old pot lids and things like that, this is going to fall in that era. It's a period piece, looking at it. And it's in good condition. I've never had one, never seen one. Um, yeah, what can I say? It's a three quarter pint for the price of 5D, five, uh, five pounds. Well, what can I say? Happy enough for that. I have had a job lot of tools and things. They cost me a pound. Flawless screwdrivers and so forth. Um, so over the moon with them. I had another pair of sugar tongs. They come in the same. I bought the two of them. I didn't want to distinguish and I didn't want to point out the one good set. However, these are particularly nice also. They're mapping and web. No, sorry, they're Elkington plate. So they're a nice substantial uh, tongs, serving tongs, and again they were two quid. They're going to go for a tenner anyway. <coughs> Next we have a job lot of coins, three pounds. And they, I can tell you now, up front there's silver in you. So we're going to start off with a solid silver fob. We have George V. So we have a shilling that's worn nothing left on it. Still silver. Silver is silver, guys. We have a few American dollars that are seriously worn. Again, silver. Uh, World's Go Columbian Expedition. 1893. So again, that's going to be silver. Another silver dollar. 1941. This bag all coming for three pound, mind. I got some rubbish coins. Uh, what's this one? We have a dime. 1946 dime. So again, silver. We have 1941 dime. Come on, camera, focus in. Silver. I'm going to use this one. Nineteen sixty. So I'll have to check that one. I don't think that one's silver. I think that one might be nickel. I then have some rubbish coins that I'll chuck back out for a pound or two tomorrow. But that little drop lot of silver there, happy enough with that guys. Three pounds. I can tell you now, there it is. Two ounces of silver by there nearly, ounce and a half, two ounces of silver. That's alright, for three quid. 
and of course I had a South Wales uh, National Union Mine Workers enamel badge. That'll go tomorrow. We get two quid for that, maybe three quid. Quick profit, it's gone. So as you can see, there's a bit of work in stock there as well. This I've had for the house is solid mahogany and it's a plate stand. 50p guys. Ah, I'm not even gonna argue with that, I'm certainly not gonna knock them down. This piece here is Dane Collection Fruit and Spice Handcrafted Scented Candles. So we have a little candle box. Nice for display. Yeah, little white bova. It's a little crude, but it's a little candle box. Nothing wrong with that. That come in with my bag. Now, as you're aware, uh, the man with the two pound filler bag for two pound was back in Merthyr. Uh, as, as you saw, Sandra dived in and she filled the bag before me. Now I have a bag full to the brim again of stuff. Um, so I start pulling it out. As you can see, here it's full again. That was my two pound bag. So, let's start that off. With a nice old saw. I quite like these, they make a nice display. So, this is the first one. Not all antique. I had a couple of pieces for camping, you know, a little camping uh, kettle and teapot made of aluminium in nice condition. You know, chuck them on the thing when you're camping. I tell you what, they're expensive to buy from the camping shops. I had an old Tetley beer tray. A 20 meter measuring tape. Well, it is what it is. A 1940s jug by Sadler, very art deco in shape. There's the underside guys. Now all this bag, including that um, candle box, all come in for two quid. Little Ainsley bars. They don't pull much. If I fill my bag up, wasn't not filling it guys. A little bag here, a little pretty bag. But I bought it because there's a load of brand new flannels and that in there, there for the house. That's why that went in. Chuck them in there. A nice little Chinese fan. It's a modern one guys, don't get excited. But it is what it is. Little Chinese fan. Yeah, there we go. The best piece I had out of there was this signed glassy. It's a glassy glass. It's, it is signed on the base. I don't know if you can see it there, guys. A circle signature. So that is a nice piece of 60s, 70s glass. Um, Raheim Mellon, so you're talking the Remeniki uh, type uh, glass. Finland. That's nice to have a signed piece. So that's an eBay item. Probably 20 quid on eBay. Thank God for that. Still perfect. Get a candlestick. Little tip when you're doing this, try not to overcrowd yourself. Uh, a couple of bits to go on my car boot stall, a record record cleaning kit. So I've Collect records, some halogen bulbs for my car, side lights for my car, a 
sweet little antique, believe it or not, 1900s Satsuma vase. Really nice little sweet vase. So that's nice. I had a load of stuff to go in my town boxes. You know, little compacts, watches, little bits of brass, you know, little brass frogs. It's all going in my pound box tomorrow. Some scourers for the house again. Little brass bottle opener. Another brass frog. This one is a Disney Mickey the Mouse in porcelain with a light up globe. And a load of pens for my office. So that was my bag today. I was a bit more picky, but Sandra did tell you I was being picky today. Um, it was a lot of new stock on there and I didn't want the new stock. Um, Sandra did have some really quirky little things. Um, she's doing a lot of gym work at the moment and she had lots of little characters that were working out on the gym and she's going to give them out on the gym as gifts. Uh, I'm trying to think now, I think that's it. Have a little look. Yeah. What do you think though guys? <laughs> that's not a bad little haul for a car boot sale with how many cars? 10, 12 cars? That is all that was there. Come on, I really can't. It's um, it's going to pay off again today, really well. Uh, some of this stuff is obviously going back on the car boot sale. It's not good enough for anything else. Some of it's going to go onto eBay, and then obviously some of the gold and the silver and that's going to get put away. Very unusual to uh, find gold and that at them prices. It doesn't come in often, guys. Good tip with our silver mind. Um, just because they say silver plate. You gotta check. Doesn't mean it is, guys. Trust your own judgment. Don't go off someone else's because they make mistakes. Um, I have bought no end of silver, 800 grade silver, granted, but still silver. And people have said it's silver plate because it's just stamped 800. You will find it. Familiarize yourself with the uh, other marks for silver and the other way. Final piece, sorry. I paid two pounds for this. Still got cellophane on it. It's a brand new camera tripod. It's even got all spirit levels and things in on the sides. Um, Vivanco, just a good make. You know, it's a really nice tripod there. Oh, some of these tripods can run up hundred pounds. I paid two quid for this morning, guys. Um, I'm not selling. I'm gonna keep it. The tripod and camera I'm using at the moment are all known from my son's girlfriend. So when I get myself a camera now, I've got a real nice tripod to go with it. But that is it. That's definitely it now. There's nothing left. So, hopefully um, you've enjoyed seeing it. Um, if I'm a little quiet this evening, it's because I'm absolutely wrecked. The kids have not let me sleep today. They really have been on a 10 out of 10. There's been no uh, calmness with them today, as you could hear. So, absolutely wrecked, and I got a load up now, and then I'm back out tomorrow morning. Rain is seriously starting to do my crust in. I am fed up of being nice in the evenings or through the week. Come the weekend, it's hammering down and killing the boots. Hate it. I don't want to go back to auctions. It's just lucky I'm loaded up with stock. But at the same time... Not bad for a morning's work, guys, as you can see. There's not many people who go out and buy this amount in a morning. And it hasn't cost me that much. Um, I think everything collectively, and a few bits you haven't seen, um, come in for about £60 for the entire haul. And to be totally honest with you, gold is normally, and jewellery is normally my favourite buy. But my favourite buy of the day has to be the autographs. For all I know, some of these people in here saved our lives. I don't know. They could have stopped World War Three. for all I know. Really got to do some research on that. And Even if it turns out that it's quite a common book that everybody had one when they left, 
I don't care. I've never ever seen one before and to be totally honest with you I wasn't 100% on what GCHQ was and it's classed as General Communications Headquarters and when you look it up that is our intelligence agency. So that is my favourite buy. I don't know why your favourite is out of all of this whether it's the gold, that brooch, hunting brooch is nice I'll give you that. Um, a lot of the silver coins now are going to scrap but it's still you know some nice bits I'm certainly happy with the day's work anyway guys I'm going to leave it there up early <laughs> I'm going to try uh, best my road tomorrow I'm going undercover though because the forecast is well, I have to say the least crap <laughs> um, I'll leave it there I really hope you've enjoyed seeing these pieces. Sorry if I'm a little tired in this vid at the end of the video. Um, I'll say thank you very much for watching. You'll find us on Facebook, Antiques Arena. We're on eBay, Antiques Arena Clearance. And we have our own website, Antiques Arena. Sorry, AntiquesArena.com. Don't forget to subscribe, guys, and I would appreciate the like and the share. Bye for now.